in states like Texas and Arizona, I think it's actually legal to shill bid your own item. So it's 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 happening out here, uh, and it's something that's hard to crack. It's easier to crack the code on the Crown Royal boxes than crack the code on uh, shill bidding, especially at the auction houses. On eBay, you used to do it because of the eBay uh, IDs, and people used to be able to figure things out this that way. I think eBay's made it harder to track that because they hide user IDs and kind of hide bid history a little bit, but more than they used to. But um, Certainly. Again, and this happens down to the $5 level all the way up to that $1.8 million level. This is a problem in the hobby that probably doesn't get talked about enough only because it's hard to track and hard to find out. But I I, it, I guarantee it affects all of us it, it, to some degree. Yeah. You said Mastro. So someone sent me, I think it was the Mastro court documents and... I think there are a few individuals that are prominent in this industry that were named in that um, Mastro case where they had an item and then it appeared that someone was shilling on behalf of them. And I think, Ryan, you said one of your older videos that you played, maybe someone from SGC, maybe the managing director, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. And then... Yeah, he was he was on the. That's what's funny. The, the, the FBI and I don't know how the list leaked. This is gosh, this is so many years ago. This is dating six or seven years ago. Uh, the somehow this this list where literally the FBI kept track of all the items of who shill bidding, et cetera, et cetera. The loss now Mastro got rid of tons of records. So there's actually there was actually way more shill bidding that went on, but those records were destroyed. So what the FBI could find were all these records. And yeah, there was uh, well, Dave Foreman at SGC. The week that list came out, SGC moved their headquarters down to Florida. I mean, is that just a weird coincidence? And stuff? Uh, Kenny Golden might be on that list. I know, yeah, uh, I, I think his name was listed and it appears that someone was maybe shilling on his behalf. I mean, this is what I oh, saw, but I couldn't guaranteed. confirm. But guaranteed. There's the list. I actually used to have the list. I, I could probably dig it up. The, the, there's actually a searchable list with the victims' names, like Keith Oberman, the ES, former ESPN announcer. He got screwed like a bunch of different times in that deal. So you can actually see the victims' names and the people who were show bidding. I'll try to dig up. If I, I'll dig up the list and send it to you because it actually would be kind of fun, especially now to go back through and search a few names and just see who's still around in the hobby. And uh, maybe, you know, ask them about it if, uh, you know, ever get them on the channel. Because, yeah, there's an actual list with actual show bidders and uh, the items and the dollar amount and the victims are even listed, too. Uh, and I don't know how that I think maybe that accidentally got posted in court documents and then somebody put it out there. And uh, I remember when that came out. There's actually way more than that. Mastro destroyed and got rid of like years of records so there the show bidding over at mastro ran deep ran for many years was millions upon millions of dollars and the dude ended up serving some prison time for that so i mean it's a serious it's a serious thing there's no wonder people like kenny golden and Harry they probably don't want to talk about it they don't want to go on record about it because they know there are potentially some serious consequences if you get caught so, and our boy up there uh, in Oregon, per, uh, Brent at PWCC, haven't seen, literally haven't seen him in a few years. So he's been awfully quiet. So uh, it's, a, it's a fun time.